In this episode, we will be focusing on the marketing and distribution of art books. We will talk about methods of exposure and gaining visibility for publication projects, such as art book fairs and social media. We will also discuss other considerations when selling publications, such as pricing, sales, and consignment. This episode features a conversation with Elvin Ho and Clara Ko of Atelier Hoko. They will discuss how they approach the process of working together on the Science of the Secondary series and how they go about marketing and distributing the series. The key learning points for this episode are what is the process of distributing and selling an art book? What are the possible pricing and marketing strategies for art books? Art publishing is the activity of making art content available to the public for sale or for free. Generally, the term refers to the distribution of printed works, such as books, but these extend also to online platforms and publications. The knowledge of how best to sell, price, market, and distribute may seem like a well-kept secret and something you learn painfully through experience. But we hope that this episode will help outline some key strategies for you to consider. It is important to think about marketing and distribution in advance, as you do not want to end up printing in excess. To start off, let's run through some key considerations that will affect how you produce, sell, and distribute your art books. When estimating the budget, it is good to ascertain how the following aspects may affect your print production cost. Materials, such as paper stock, binding methods, fonts. Content and design, such as editing, typesetting, graphics, photography. Production, such as printing quantity, or if you're printing in full color, one color, or black and white size of book, number of pages, shipping and handling. Pay attention to how publishers or printers charge for pages printed. There are cases where a few pages may be inconsequential to the cost of printing. Sometimes a printer may charge close to the same amount for a book between 144 and 164 pages. Similarly, Printing in bulk quantities may be advantageous in terms of reducing the cost per item if your intention is to have a large supply of books. Ultimately, what is your bottom line cost per item? This refers to the most amount of money you are willing to spend to print each book. To make better guesses, you should reach out to various printers to get a quote for producing your book with its specifications. You may refer to our episode focused on printing for some advice on how to go about this process. There are a spectrum of ways to price your book. Here are some things you can keep in mind to craft your own pricing strategy. To help maximize all the effort and money you've put into your book, it is important to properly take into account your materials cost the cost of your time and labor, as well as that of your collaborators, and a retail markup when distributing your books in a commercial space. For a rough formula of a retail markup, you can try calculating how much it would cost for materials plus cost of time spent producing the edition per hour divided by number of books in the edition plus a retail markup. If you sell through bookshops, dealers, and galleries, they will take up to 40 to 50% of the retail price. While they may get you access to paying audiences, this retail markup will affect your share of profits too. Most of us acknowledge that making art books is a labor of love. We pay for the costs of producing our own artist books, as publishing grants are few and far between. 
Even if publishing may not be an endeavor that one undertakes to reap a high profit, it is only realistic to ensure that at least the production costs, as well as the time and labor poured into the project, are covered in terms of monetary returns. The next thing would be to reflect on how information about your publication and how to access or purchase it can be disseminated. To develop an achievable marketing strategy, we can think about what is the right platform for distributing your book? Does the audience of this platform resonate with your work? What is this platform's reach? Is it local or international? If it's an international platform, are you incurring shipping fees when sending your books? Does your book address a context that international audiences can relate with? Money and profit may not be the main concerns of embarking on a publication project. The possibility of disseminating your work, producing an interesting object, reaching out to people, or extending your practice may be your main goal. In service of these goals, it would be an important consideration to keep the budget reasonable, as this also helps ensure that you do not overburden and exhaust yourself. Most publication projects with exploratory goals often take the form of a self-made scene, which would have a lower cost of production. Finally, books that have been produced on the occasion of specific exhibitions and projects may be priced differently. For example, your audience may be encouraged to give a donation, or the publication might intentionally be kept free for distribution. Common Models of Publishing for Artists First, you have self-publishing. Self-publishing is the publication of media by its creator without the involvement of a third party such as a publisher. In the traditional publishing model, the publisher bears all the costs and risks of publication, facilitates issues of printing and production, but retains most of the profit if the book is successful. Oftentimes, they also provide feedback for the content that may benefit comprehension and cohesion, or may be attuned to commercial purposes. In self-publishing, the creator operates independently and bears all the costs and risks. However, they also make and determine all decisions related to their project independently, unless working with other collaborators and they also stand to earn a higher share of the profit per sale. Sometimes, self-published books may receive partial support from funding bodies. Secondly, there is working with art publishers. There are two types of publishers, commercial publishers and independent publishers. Commercial publishers may be more selective about which books they publish. If accepted, Artists usually bear no costs to publish in exchange for selling the rights to their works. They receive in-house editing, design, printing, marketing, and distribution services, and are paid royalties based on sales. Independent publishers are not part of large businesses or corporations. Many small presses deal with niche areas and may have objectives beyond profit. They often work with a select group of authors or practitioners that resonate with their specialization. Depending on their scale, they may be able to provide the range of services such as editing, production, and distribution in different capacities. Promoting your art books Marketing is the activity and process of planning, communicating, and delivering content that will engage people who could buy your work. Let us go into a few ways to promote your art books. Make sure the online channels you manage personally have a direct option or action to purchase the book. This can come in the form of order forms or direct inquiry channels. When posting book information, whether that be an excerpt of the publication, press release, or advance information sheets, 
It makes sense to include the details of the book as well as an order form with postage costs. You can decide how much and what kind of control you would like to have over the distribution of your art books. This can be done directly by the producer or service provider, or by using indirect channels with distributors or intermediaries. Let's go through some key considerations that can help inform your marketing and distribution strategy. Maintain a digital presence. A website can act as a consolidated point of information and contact for your publication project with instructions on how to purchase. The ease of access and inclusion of necessary contact information will also help increase awareness of your projects and publications. You may consider micropages like card.co that are free, responsive, organized and easy to publish and tweak. You can also host your project on your existing personal website. While your website may serve as a central location for learning more about your publication and getting all the information needed, social media platforms are more frequently accessed by most audiences. You can engage and cultivate your audience by sharing your processes. Launching your project. In choosing where to circulate or launch your book, it is important to consider your subject matter and the audience you are speaking to or hope to reach out to. You can announce new publications at launches that are usually held in venues relevant and compatible to the content of the book. These can include bookstores, cafes, bars, galleries, and libraries. Still, given the potential costs of arranging such an event, it may not be necessary to launch your book with a special venue. Something to keep in mind, however, is that Lelant provides a good opportunity to sell books to your immediate networks and friends. The launch can also be supplemented by relevant programs such as a performance or a reading. To encourage more purchases, books are also usually sold at a special discounted launch price. Other places to consider selling and launching art books in Singapore include online and offline platforms such as art book fairs. Two examples of art book fairs in Singapore are the Singapore Art Book Fair and the Queer Zine Fest. Art book fairs are a type of curated art fair or exhibition for the purpose of displaying, selling, and networking between artists, art book creators, illustrators, writers, specialty printers, independent publishers, and their audiences. The art book fair circuit is the best context to launch an art book considering their target audience and interest in promoting new art books. Get featured or listed. Art book listings and collections can bring exposure to your work while allowing for networking opportunities. Some local examples include the Singapore Art Book Library and the Book Show. Being part of a collection helps identify a community and shared context for your work and that may be both beneficial in terms of practice and sale. There may also be open calls or competitions that you might be keen to submit your art book for. Now that we've run through a couple of things to keep in mind when pricing and marketing your book, we also can't forsake the actual photographs of the book that you will be circulating online. The first thing you might want to think about is to determine what strong deliverables and which spreads need to be documented. It does not and should not be everything. You can also consider a flip-through video if you would like to give an extended preview to your audience. If your book is suitable for scanning, do so at 600 dpi in color and in JPEG format with no additional editing or sharpening. If the book is too big, you may have to scan it in parts and stitch them together. Shoot your book with a camera for key features, details, textures and effects that can't be scanned. 
This should ideally be taken against the same background that you have used for your scan. To make sure the lighting and color of your art book is consistent and accurately represented in your documentation, it would be helpful to cross-compare between spreads. There may be possible discrepancies in how color, font, or fade effects are presented when your documentation is viewed on mobile devices in contrast to the desktop. To wrap up this episode, we want to go through some last few things that would be good to know if you're planning to distribute your books at an art fair. Some items you may want to have on hand are shelving, book stands, holders, or other display systems to prop up your books and any other materials. Publicity materials for your existing or upcoming projects. Browsing copies for the books on sale. Stickers or display notes that could indicate prices, discounts, or trivia. Business cards or postcards with contact details to hand out to visitors. Invoice sheets or a notepad to keep note of sales. Cash float to be able to handle money and change. Mobile devices or apps for cashless payment. Table covers to cover your books overnight. Art book fairs serve as a means of not only selling your work, but also function as a valuable opportunity to meet other artists, to exchange ideas and information. They also help to set a timeline to work towards in terms of preparing work to be launched and sold. If it is a book fair in another country or city, think about your travel costs. While you might make a loss in the grander scheme of things, consider that forging new connections at overseas art fairs is also a valuable resource in itself. We will now be moving on to the conversation segment of this episode with Elvin Ho and Clara Ko from Atelier Hoko on their series, Science of the Secondary, and how they approach working together on it, as well as their marketing and distributing strategies. Hi everybody, this is the conversation part of a beginner's guide to art books. Uh, this episode is on marketing and distribution. Today we are with Atelier Hoko, which is made up of Clara and Alvin. My first question actually is about uh, Atelier Hoko. How did it come about and how did it also lead to what you are doing today? Uh, it came about because we wanted to just have fun. So in 2002, we came together, we just got a space, got some equipment, and we started to initiate our own projects. Mm. Um, and then, because uh, everything we were doing at that point in time was just to really build our portfolio to go go somewhere to study. And then we, we mm. did manage to go the, to the Netherlands to do our master's. Mm. And then, came back, continued to make more projects. Uh, we were looking at arrangement, so very everyday kind of subject, because it was a kind of a continuation of Clara's uh, thesis. I think during that time, there was also different medi you know, mediums that we were playing with, uh, mm. exhibitions, uh, sound, photography, video. Uh, but after a while, I think it became mm. too big. Uh, <laughs> arrangement as a subject is so much, too much to think about. Right. So we wanted to, uh, in a way, kind of, what do you say? focus mm. on our work a bit more. So we want to look at smaller subjects. Right. And that's when we started to think, ah, maybe we can just look at a very simple subject like an apple. Right. Uh, which okay. is uh, completely accessible. You don't need uh, a lot of money to, uh, to find it. So we started this, we don't really know what we were doing. We just wanted mm. to look at apple and then uh, we, we collected a bunch of research and then we thought, mm. okay, what do we do with it? With that, right. that stack of research, uh, notes, drawings, right. uh, photos, and we realized, yeah, maybe we make a book. Just mm. you know, in a way, uh, to kind of filter the, filter the work, yeah, the process to right. filter the process to and then communicate. communicate. Because if you are forced to communicate, well, not, you force yourself to communicate, then you have to be very clear right. about what you're doing. So in some way, like the book form is a kind of like consolidation of like the different kind of uh, formats that you actually use to do as a collective. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know if it's considered easier. Mm. <laughs> but it's as more it's a way uh, in a way more accessible when you make books 
uh, uh, instead of trying to make big exhibitions or, right. or as a, then you you are you are dealing with a lot of other things, emails and logistics. Or, right. So when we, we want to make a book and then we want to make the book smaller so that right. you can distribute it uh, faster. For so. the wider and further. Yeah. So that's like kind of a benefit of that format, yeah. that, which, yeah. which is why you're settled for that. Is, is, is it kind of like settling for that? Is, is, are you looking at other formats still? Yeah, so that's the so funny thing. Uh, mm. uh, <laughs> when we make books, so, uh, right. every time we make one, one, and then we try to make a kind of physical installation. Yeah. It could be very big or it can be very small. Uh, experience. It's, just, it's just basically kind of experience because yeah, we, we, don't, we don't really want to settle with right. just the book. Mm. Uh, the book is in a way the kind of foundation and then yes. from there you can do other things. So this series, um, Science of the Secondary, so there's 10 volumes in this box set. Um, Clara, you were talking about apples being the first um, issue and I think um, Alvin, you were also sharing a little bit about how your practice is actually quite reactionary also to the industrial design scene and how you know objects are being designed. Um, just wanted to know why actually uh, you started from apples. Uh, uh, apple was because Everybody knows an apple, so it's universally uh, accessible. Uh, mm -hmm. We thought it was important rather than talking about chairs or a table, which might uh, might be some. Not many people might understand it so much, even though they use it. So we want to mm -hmm. look at apple as a, and also it's not really an animate object. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of uh, absorb yourself of a bit of a ego or whatever you call it, and every the other. So that's the main mm -hmm. reason. Uh, also, of course, yeah, like what Clara said, uh, A is for Apple. Even it's though that's the first thing we learn when M yeah. is for mm. Apple. So, why is it never for end? <laughs> Uh, maybe also because I, if, I think if when you look at apple, then you start to you don't look at the apple as an object, but you also you look at why how we behave around the apple, and so I think the the behavior around the apple was for us more more interesting uh, to to look at. In a very related way, talking about audiences, because I think that's where uh, a lot of bookmakers and publishers would would be worried about most of the time, uh, especially like who's buying the book. Um, um, where can I sell the book? How, how does it reach out to the audience that I'm, I'm making the book for? So I think let, let's maybe kind of reflect on, I guess, primary audiences of what you are doing. Whether is it something that you are conscious of when you're doing the books? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then I guess um, why, why then you think um, um, the certain audience that you all have, why do they, why, who are they and why are they uh, uh, liking the books? Yeah, so starting from who is your audience? <laughs> Actually, to be honest, we never thought of our audience no. in the okay. first place. We just did what we wanted to without thinking about what is who's who's gonna buy these books. Mm. And then be, uh, simply because we don't know, who, we, we, who, we really don't know. Yeah, we don't know we who don't will be interested. Yeah, to buy a book market, about Apple. Yeah. We just thought, okay, let's do a book, make a book about Apple, and then we see how it goes from there. Mm -hmm. So when we first put it out, it was really, really uh, slow. slow. It was bad. In fact, it, you can consider it badly received because I think people don't know how to respond to a book about Apple. They've, at, at the point of time, it was still quite a novelty. Well, nowadays, there are a lot of books about singular, singular But it's subjects. also not like really about the Apple, right? So yeah, it's, it's not like, really about It's called Science of the Secondary, yeah. so it's a mm. bit it's not. Right. easy to kind of understand immediately what yeah. we are trying to do. And the format as well. The format is not yeah. clear. It's, is it a magazine? Is it a book? Yeah, uh, so, right. so that part was also confusing. And also because we were not, uh, we're not very familiar with publishing. Yeah. Mm. It was the first time we were we, we didn't set out to be, become like publishers mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. to sell books. Yeah. It's just a kind of publication to clear, clarify our research mm. for ourselves. Right. And then we thought maybe somebody might be interested in it. So we just printed some and then mm. we started to ask. To print the 1,000, it's not some. <laughs> yeah, 1, to make sense of the cost. Yeah, to make sense of the cost. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So just try that. And then, yeah, it was really just taking just a risk. just kind of yeah. make a list of, um, just try to find out and make a list of distributors like, who probably right. be interested in this. Local or just in, already um, internationally? Yeah, everywhere, yeah, international, everywhere, yeah. okay. locally as well. Yeah. And then we will oh. send them physical copies. Because yeah. 
thankfully it's very thin. Uh, yeah. The first one. <laughs> so just free copies like to see, okay, do you to be interested to distribute or mm. sell this thing. And so only idea books came back to us from yeah. the Netherlands. And uh, locally, I mean there are some bookshops that okay, like we're willing to try to sell them. And then mm. um, in Japan there's Utrecht. Uh, they they knew us because of the first book fair. Uh, they mm. came over for the first book fair and then they saw our books and then we also asked them like they'd be interested and then they, they were willing to try. Mm. Yeah. So that that's the beginning part of the distribution. Right. So yeah. it was already something that you all did from the first book. Uh, mm. The yeah, distribution you mean? Yeah, yeah, the distribution of books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's like very, we were quite lucky. Right. We were quite I mean, lucky. They, they, I mean, idea books are quite, they are quite big and, mm. and yet they are willing to be, they are very open to try mm. to yeah. sell this, this thing. Okay. Yeah. And also because maybe we kind of promised them a little bit on like, oh, it's going to be a series. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that helps a bit. I don't know. I think what happened is that uh, when we were, we, we kind of promise idea books a series. Uh, mm. We also realize that then our books have to be more universally appealing mm. in that way, mm. not culture specific. So, and that's the reason why we avoid doing anything that's local, you know, like in mm. Singapore, you know, a book about the cinema, you know, I don't think we want to do right. that. So yeah. we have, we, we, we kept, we always have to remind ourselves to, to, to be speaking a language that most people in the world uh, can understand, regardless of the, 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 the difference in culture. Right. Perhaps when, when you are traveling, right? And I also noticed that some of your book launches are also overseas. So do you all coordinate your workflow, which is also to shoot more photographs, but at the same time also think about the distribution and the launch also coinciding with your holiday trips? <laughs> yes. So it becomes work, basically. Yeah, like, yeah, you got it right. Actually, every single time we, 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 we go overseas. We coincide. Yeah, like, it's, oh. yeah, it's never strictly holiday. Uh, Oh, no. work, always, work, work holiday. Yeah, work, work always a work holiday. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's good, I think. It's yeah. not a bad thing. We're trying to make use of every yeah. moment. To coordinate. Uh, yeah, mm. like, we work with distributors or something. Like, okay, well, maybe we can launch in your shop or, or, or we can launch in your gallery. Then then, then mm. they're happy with it. Then we're happy with it. And then we work towards that. So like uh, mm. two years ago, I think we went, we did this uh, very, uh, big show in, in Taipei, Pon, Ponding Gallery. So they were so nice. They said, mm. okay, you can use our space. And then we make wow. different installations in every every and room, floor, every yeah, floor. Three levels. Yeah. And then we spent like a month in, in tai, Taiwan. So wow. it's like a holiday. Slash, yeah. Yeah. Works. Yeah. You're saying that all of them have a kind of a launch. Yeah, almost every mm. title we, we try to make. try to force, kind of force ourselves and like make it point to have a parallel um, mm. event. Not even experience, yeah, experience. Like, like, yeah. to launch the book, but sometimes it doesn't happen immediately. Like for for instance, for Cup, mm. uh, it took us four years to develop. To the... develop, not not four straight years, but then we didn't, we couldn't decide mm. on what to do with the Cup launch. Right. So it only happened after four years when um, STB approached us to do something in mm. Japan, and then we thought, why not just. You know, now we have the funding, we can do this, mm. this project, this... Cafe cup. Cafe, you know, ideally. Mostly, I think when we try to plan physical kind of experiences for any of the, the titles, the, the biggest problem is logistics because Singapore is, is, we don't have space and then, you know, it's not... Yeah, so we have to work within very uh, tight kind of uh, premises, like you can't make big, super big exhibition and then you don't know what to do with all the physical build up, you know, where you're going to throw them or where you're going to store them. So these things, we mm. we have to find a way to, to, to respond to them. Maybe sometimes we don't do it at all. So mm. we do something uh, like, for example, for window, door and pipe, the idea was to, to make a big exhibition in a big a gallery with big money and, you know, big windows, big windows and big, and big doors. doors. And then we, after that, then one day we realized, hey, what are we going to do with all those uh, things big like things? Right. After we build them up for the exhibition, then we say, okay, no, we stop. So from there, we, we went back and we think a bit about windows, door, but then we realized that everybody has got windows and doors and pipes. We pass by it or we use it every day. Mm. So how, how, why don't we bring the exhibition to your space, you know, to your own personal mm. homes or your offices or, and, and it became a series of instructional postcards. 
Mm. So yeah, there are challenges, but and then also we try to to work around it, and sometimes it it gives quite nice uh, outcomes. Mm. And then like for socks, uh, she was heavily pregnant <laughs> when we mm. were about to launch the the book, so we couldn't make also a, a physical event because mm. that's mm. too much. Mm. So we make a, a an exercise video. Something a bit smaller in terms of production. Maybe talking about the fact that there is a kind of a uh, um, issue by issue kind of a uh, sequence, um, and if there's no uh, very if there's no specific kind of like a structure to when you launch it, like how do you then plan each issue? Um, do they do you release two at a time at any instance, or is it quite one after another? Mostly one after another. Uh, yeah, and we don't have a calendar uh, to mm. plan to to to, to uh, announce when mm. when the next book will be. So it depends on when we finish the research. So sometimes, uh, yeah, okay, we plan maybe for the next one to come in about eight months time. But sometimes it's delayed. But it's okay because again, we, we are not nobody's waiting for us. <laughs> Actually, the distributors are waiting. distributors are waiting sometimes, but it's okay. We have to answer to them. Yeah, we just tell them, yeah, she's pregnant again, or <laughs> no, 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 it's not an excuse. <laughs> what is some advice that you would like to give to people who are listening, uh, in terms of maintaining a series? Um, any advice on that, and why actually then eventually at the end of the series, like y'all wanted to have a box set, or at least at the end of the tenth book. Any advice? <laughs> Don't think about money. I mean, I think a lot of people are asking how do we maintain like financially or so, but right. I I think we, we, sometimes you, you just can't think about money because if you think about money, then everything doesn't make sense uh, and you cannot move on and you cannot do anything anymore. So, uh, yeah, I think that the joy of the process of doing these books is mm. outweighs uh, money. Okay. Uh, you have to think about how much you want that content to be out instead of the money, like how much you're gonna earn, you're gonna make a loss, blah blah blah. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense to, to think of making money from yeah. books, right? I think the, 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 the what do you call that? Returns? It's yeah, horrible. The mar- the margin is very <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, I'm sure any bookseller will be able to say, tell you that. So, I, I think the consistency comes from really the interest in, in the work itself, uh, whether mm. or not you're interested to, to continue to put out the content. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I, I, of course, there are, we, are, we are quite fortunate to still have people who are quite interested in, in what we put out, thankfully. Mm. So, so that, that helps, of course, to, to, to mm. kind of keep us going. A mm. bit. I think there were a lot of complaints because our books got have got no proper spine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so stitch is a proper spine, but <laughs> yeah, you know, you know how people are. They want to see the, yeah. the thing on the shelf amongst other other books. So, so, so we thought, okay, let's finish ten and then we make a box to kind of yeah uh, to mm. uh, <laughs> end end that part of the, the series and then. Yeah. It can help to also sell it as a full set yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's a kind of a way to consolidate. You know the za za loose yeah. loose pieces like having one whole full box actually, especially those people who got OCD, you know, <laughs> it helps them to keep it together to keep mm. it sane. Yeah, right. but no, there's no real reason. Mm. Also, I think it's a way to say okay, then we move on to the next ten. You know, mm. it's a way of clo- it's a kind of closure because then we will we will not print so much of the first ten books mm. from here on. You know, that's the idea. Mm. Right. So stop uh, using using a, a kind of a box set to also stop on kind of like the addition so that yeah. it becomes more um, exclusive lah in a way because it, it kind of stops print then you know yeah, not, it doesn't yeah. recur. Uh, also because we self publish, so <laughs> yes. storage storage is a problem. Is a problem. Ah, okay, okay. Problem. Yeah, if we continue to print the first ten titles, then oh my god, wow, yeah. that's true. We can't handle it. We have to stop somewhere. So. So in a series also thinking about like the next after after one set, it, do you all plan to like shift things? I haven't seen the banana issue yet. Mm. Uh, just wanting to see if like do you all actually have any thoughts on, you know, having uh, a continuation that's slightly different or actually you all want to keep it in the same organic way? For now it's the same. Yeah, we, we did consider. We did consider changing the format uh, for banana onwards. 
you know, with a spine. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> not but the staple colors. Not the staple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah, we thought, okay, you know, it's maybe not so important. Uh, again, uh, we, we try as much as possible to dedicate our time to content production, which means the research. So spend yeah. time eating bananas or, or doing stupid things with bananas. That to us is the most important. And then to, to, mm. to, to spend so much time on, oh, let's rethink the format. And uh, it doesn't help we are not trained yeah. in, 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 in graphic design. So that's mm. very difficult for us to, to think of a new format or to invent a new format. So we, we try mm. to Actually, that's not, not really a good reason to change the format. So, so yeah. mm. just focus on the content. Yeah, we, we mm. kind of enjoy it. And it's so light. The book is light. Yeah. That's important for us. So I think the yeah. lightness helps you to go further in terms of you know uh, mm. posting or yeah we actually didn't plan it to be so light but then it really helped to travel yeah. mm. like further and wider mm. what are your thoughts on uh, I mean y'all, y'all did mention actually uh, a little bit already on you know uh, if you focus too much on the money part I guess it removes the the, the whole beauty of the project actually uh, the fundamental uh, reason why you'll do it but I guess trying to think about the business side of it is, is also a very pragmatic uh, component so for something like science and the secondary like what what are some ways that you also kind of sustain it uh, as a business uh, of, of or as kind of side business of, of publishing uh, yeah um, we don't make a loss from from uh, science or secondary, uh, mm. but it, it's not enough to cover for our daily expenses. So we teach mm. part time here and there. We make workshops sometimes, uh, mostly because what we do in, in, in the research here is quite relevant to, uh, I guess, pedagogy, um, mm. the idea of unknowing, or, uh, relearning things. Mm. So that helps. Uh, in terms of business, it's a horrible uh, model. <laughs> the, the, I think we are always in the red. Mm. Uh, if you count uh, the man hours that we the amount of hours we put into each book is, is impossible but right. uh, yeah like we said uh, it's not if you keep mm. thinking of trying to con- quantify uh, right. time spent effort uh, with money production. then production right. then it's too much uh, so that's the reason why we do everything mm. in-house uh, mm. not because we are multi-talented but we are just <laughs> poor as we just do what we can. Yeah, we just do what we, we can. don't really outsource yeah. so much. Yeah. So for science of the secondary, how do you actually decide on the price for each book? For the first one, like for Apple, that we actually asked like different people, like how, how much would you pay for this? So like mm. we got very vast range. range. For instance, the students would say $10 and then the professional like working adults maybe mm. if they're interested they would say like $50 so uh, I mean it's not a very thick and hardcover kind of book it's very casual so we cannot also sell it for a lot and we also mm. ask the I mean the, the bookshops will also advise on how much it would be like, to, to actually sell it right okay yeah. so how, were, were their advice helpful especially for like the book uh, publishers because they would know mm. you know what's the price range for a book like this Mm, yeah. they, they will know, but I think it also differs from country to country. So oh. in Europe, they, they actually think our book is a bit uh, pricey because of the, I mean, if you compare the size, the thickness to, to larger books, then it's a bit too much for them. Oh. And also, of course, because it's important to them. Uh, mm. Locally, I think prices so, are okay, right? It's mm. acceptable. So it, I think it really depends. Uh, I think in Taiwan, uh, it's a bit it's expensive. expensive, right? Because in Taiwan, the printing is, so I mean, cheap. the production of a magazine is very, very cheap. Right. Most of the time. Yeah, in Taiwan. In Taiwan so ours is considered really quite expensive in Taiwan. For and such a size and yeah. right. format of a magazine. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it really depends on country to country. Right. But I guess, I, guess, I don't know whether proportionately when it's sold as a box set, like whether, does it kind of balance it all out or? How do you then think about pricing as a set? Um, How do we think about pricing for a set? I think it's just slightly cheaper than buying individually. <laughs> it's like times right. 10 and then you minus a bit. It's like a 10% right. discount. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. But, but does it feel like, I think people then don't question about the price when they see 
the scale. I guess it's, it looks a bit more substantial with like the <laughs> spine and the box and everything, right? Right, it looks yeah. expensive. Right? It can look expensive. expensive right? I don't know. Hmm. We never thought, thought about that actually. Yeah, just... yeah. Okay, how much is the box set actually? Quite expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah, how much is it? I'm sure much curious. Wait, what one, do we say? If one is 199 or something like that. Yeah. 190, we think like it's one, one. If one is 20, then 10 will be 200. But yeah. then you have the box and the poster, right? That right. like the throw in the free gift. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I mean, that's a good strategy as well. I think having like extra stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess during your launches, you also have some postcards for some of the editions. So some of these are also mm. ways that people also come up with to kind of uh, accelerate a bit of sales or like to bring in curiosity or interest. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, 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 yeah. We try to, yeah, la. there's a small level of marketing uh, considerations. Uh, if, otherwise, it becomes just, uh, you're just assembling 10 books together. Yeah. So sometimes we have to, yeah. Add in my bonus thing. Like bonus, yeah, poster bonus. Yeah. of our processes yeah. over the 10 years. So I think, yeah, thanks for coming by and sharing with everyone what this whole um, project is about. Just maybe one last question to kind of like wrap up our session and to end off is to kind of, you know, one advice that you would actually give to anyone who's planning to do something like this uh, for the first time, like, yeah. I think <laughs> we did say, we, we did, we, we keep talking about like, don't think about money, right? But then actually you have to think like in the, if you want to sustain this, what you're doing right you, you simply have to keep your overheads as low as you can as possible right. because for the book um this market right like mm. i mean in you want if you want to sell a book you you really cannot you just cannot sell it for a lot of money and expect it to to sell out mm. you know so if your cost is low you can still make a bit of money and sustain the whole the whole um process and you can make mm. more and more out, like do more reprints or whatever yeah and mm. you yeah. just have to keep it low overhead I mean, means everything uh, don't yeah. you know, rental of space or yeah. equipment mm. or you know hiring help maybe some things you can do yourself then you right. do it yourself so we try that mm. so the resource so, resourcefulness yeah, yeah, the yeah whole exactly. like project. just try to keep it as low as possible because yeah. we have seen friends who actually um, make books right and then they are quite expensive to make in the first place mm. and then the pricing gets really crazy like they, they have to price it like $80 a book or something and then yeah. it's really hard to sell an $80 book even no matter yeah. how good the content is so a lot of people actually I mean through experience like mm. what I've seen is that people are very discouraged after um, trying to make a very a very good but substantial book substantial book yeah. not, I mean it's not about just the thickness but when you when you're like, well, it's my, my hobby or whatever, right. and then I put all my money in it, and then, uh, I don't know, somehow the, the cost is so high that you can't actually make any right. money back, or um, you can't even sell it, you can't even push mm. it out, because nobody's buying it, because simply because mm. it's just too expensive to buy, and then ends up you keep all this stock, and then you mm. have might have to throw it away, and it's very discouraging. It's actually what makes a lot of, I think, la, um, people not want to print the second book anymore right. um, or continue the, the, mm. the, the, the personal work. Which is a pity because the yeah. content is good. Yeah. The content is, is good, yeah. They're really yeah. good. And just have to keep it mm. down, try to do everything yourself. Right. <laughs> try to do everything yourself. <laughs> if possible, or right. get help and be resourceful. Right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thank, Thank you, Clara and Thank Alvin. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching this episode of Art Books, A Beginner's Guide. If you've enjoyed this series, we would also appreciate it if you can fill in a feedback form that can be accessed through the QR code or link. We have also compiled a list of titles or texts that have been referenced or consulted on in the episode for your reading pleasure. See you next time.